Hello, I'm Mark Nelson, Vice President for Student Affairs and Vice Provost for Academic Affairs. Four years ago, Jessie Ashton had her eyes on the University of Alabama. After visiting more than 40 other campuses, she realized, like many of you, that her heart belonged at the capstone. It would have been impossible for Jessie to realize as a freshman the impact she would have on our campus, but today she stands as evidence of the power that one committed and passionate leader can have. Through her work with the SGA, Academic Honor Council, Greek Life, Leadership, and many other organizations, Jessie always finds a way to give back to her alma mater. Jessie embodies the qualities that we value at the University of Alabama, and it is an honor to have such a strong, outstanding young woman leading and learning on our campus. It is no surprise to me that Jessie is wrapping up her final semester by teaching others through Tide Talks. As she moves on to pursue a graduate degree in higher education, her impact on others will be limitless. It is my honor to introduce to you Jessie Ashton. Just because we may be biologically 
designed or fit to perform certain appropriated functions. Biological elements don't need to dictate the intellectual and social functions, capabilities, and rights of humans. It also maintains a certain need to make, remain within reason when demanding great equal rights. The good news. Women make up 57% of undergraduate degrees and 60% of master's degrees. But all this knowledge that I was gaining from Cheryl Sandberg and her book and the subsequent articles and documentaries I would read afterward led me to realize that women still were being underrepresented in some of the most powerful political, social, and economic positions, and our voices still weren't being heard. The bad news. Only 21 of the Fortune 500 CEOs are women. 18% of our elected congressional seats, women. 17% of our board seats are women. 14% of our executive officer positions are women, and less than a third of SGA presidents on the top 50 campuses are women. In 1970, women made 59 cents on the dollar. 40 years later, in 2010, we were up to 77 cents. As Marla Thomas says, 40 years and 18 cents, a dozen eggs has gone up 10 times that amount. Now, this frustrates me for many reasons, but mostly just because I believe I'm more valuable than an egg. <laughs> um, what can we do to change this? Moving forward, we need to redefine the word. We need to redefine feminism and get rid of all the connotations that we've given this like really powerful um, social justice issue. Susan B. Anthony said, our job is not to make young women grateful, it's to make them ungrateful so they keep going. So how do we keep going? Feminism isn't an F word. It isn't scary, it's equality. And it's necessary and it's time to embrace that. We just need to stop being afraid. Right now, I'm frustrated with the fact that But I can't get my person. Um, <laughs> we can keep going by empowering women to know that they can do anything a man can do, and when doing so, they deserve equal compensation. How is it that women are increasingly outperforming men in the classroom, but they haven't received equal compensation in the workforce? How is it that with more and more women in the workforce, we're seeing less and less uh, women in the room when discussing big, big issues? How is it that um, in Fortune 500 companies, the chief executive officers can't get directions to women to the restroom because they've never been asked before. Women, you need to, we need to raise our hands, sit at the table, lean in, and stop apologizing. Men, you need to recognize your responsibility in this change, support, and make room. You, if you need to leave this talk with one, when I did, can you learn one thing from me? Um, it's that feminism is for everybody. No, no matter what your social identity is, the most, mis or most masculine man, the most staunch Republican, you can be a feminist. Because feminism isn't about anything other than equality. Nothing more, nothing less. Anyone of quality is not threatened by a woman of equality. Cheryl Sandberg reminds us that just because things could be worse, that doesn't give us a reason not to make them better. The laws of economics and many studies of diversity show that if we tapped into our entire pool of human resources, our collective performance would improve. So where do we start? We start by making this a conversation and finding ways to encourage women to pursue leadership opportunities. We also need to give men and women a real choice. If we get rid of societal norms of women in the work, of women in the household and men in the workplace, everyone wins. <coughs> Until women have support from their employers, colleagues, and partners in familial responsibilities, nobody wins. We also need to respect men who fulfill household responsibilities. Because if not, they don't have a real choice. Sandberg reminds us that an equal opportunity is not equal opportunity unless everybody has the encouragement that makes pursuing that opportunity possible. That's what men when they can achieve their full potential. How incredible would it be to have a world where we had less 
less guilty moms, more involved dads, and thriving children. That's what I grew up with, and that's why I'm here talking to you today. I didn't believe in feminism a year ago. I cringed at the word. But I grew up with parents who supported each other in their careers. I grew up with parents who equally contributed to parenting. And I grew up with a father that challenged me to be a strong woman and to be independent and to not dumb myself down for anyone. But yet, I grew up with parents who hated feminism, who considered it an effort and raised me that way. How is that possible? My family embodied what feminism could be, and yet they couldn't even accept that the word was really in, their, in the human language. This is why we need to redefine feminism, and this is why we need to then embody it. But how? We need to support women, and we need, we need men to support women, and we need women to support women. It's a little bold. Uh, <laughs> um, that seems like such a simple concept, but more and more often we're seeing women hurting other women. I'm aware that even I'm done. It. But we perpetuate our own sexism by sharing negative ideas about our peers and then legitimizing the gender bias. Women need to recognize that the more they help each other, the more they help themselves, and men need to help facilitate that. We also need to love men, and we need to love women. We especially need to look, this is not an us versus them situation. Um, we also need to appreciate the women that don't aspire to traditional leadership roles. Um, I want to be VP of a flagship university one day. But I'm aware that my aspirations and my goals do not match up with that of any adult one size at all. Me wanting to be a VP of a flagship university is just as important as a woman who wants to be a VP of her child's PTA one day. By undervaluing women without a salary, we've taken away their voice and not given them a place to value what they have to say and taken away their ability to make a difference in their communities. We've degraded them to just a housewife and we are taking away the value of an incredibly necessary position. Feminism isn't for everyone, or sorry, feminism isn't for radicals, but we have them. Feminism isn't just, isn't political, but we, it does affect politics. Feminism isn't just for women, but we have some incredible ones. Feminism is for everyone, because as Dr. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. A tight talk on feminism is what I would do if I wasn't afraid. So ask yourself, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And then go out and do it. <laughs>